Digital blackout as undersea cable damage disrupts internet services in parts of Africa. Bitcoin hits new all-time high of $72,000. Cognition releases the first AI programmer. Flutterwave discontinues butter and Airbnb bans indoor security cameras. All this and many more on today's episode. Hi, ah, you can call me FK. It's another exciting week of tech and this is Tech News from Africa and beyond. Many countries in West Africa, including Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, and others, are currently experiencing significant internet outages since Thursday, March 14, 2024. This disruption has caused major problems for businesses and individuals who rely on a stable internet connection. Banks, for example, were reportedly affected, injuring online banking services. Telecommunication companies also faced issues, potentially impacting phone calls and data services. For people who work remotely or rely on the internet for daily tasks, this outage resulted in loss of productivity and a lot of inconvenience. In this current heat and the um, recent unstable electricity, the hike in fuel prices and dollar rates for people like us in Nigeria, this is not what we need right now. Online businesses are now a major backbone of the economy and to have uh, an issue that disrupts internet connectivity is definitely going to lead to a lot of huge losses. This is bad. The corporate behind the internet disruptions appears to be damage sustained by undersea cables. These critical cables run along the seabed and function as the arteries for internet data transmission across vast distances. Reports indicate that damage occurred near Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, affecting several major undersea cables, including the West Africa Cable System, Main One, and Africa Coast to Europe, ACE. You see, immediately I heard that this was the reason, <laughs> I knew that this was not going to be over quick. This is not some wireless signal disruption. This is an actual physical cable living under the water that suddenly broke. So it is going to take a bunch of expert engineers and divers, sometimes that's the same person, to go under the sea and physically fix them. You see, I have once worked as an intern at a telco. I think it was Zane that time before they became Airtel. I once worked as an intern there. And sometimes we have to go and climb these masts when there is internet uh, issues. And sometimes we can be there for like a day. This one is 10 times worse. Telecommunication companies and cable consortiums are working on repairs to restore the internet connectivity. Companies like MTN Nigeria and Main One are collaborating to find alternative routes for data transmission while repairs are underway. Unfortunately, a full restoration of services across the region may take several weeks, with estimates ranging up to five weeks according to Main One. In the meantime, users can expect continued internet disruptions, potentially experiencing slower speeds or limited connectivity. I can't help but wonder what led to this in the first place. Some people are even rumoring that it might be some sort of rebel attack. But please, God, please, let it not be up to five weeks. And I'm very sure that Starlink users are going to be grinning right now because uh, <laughs> they cannot relate to all this mess. In fact, for me, uh, I didn't know that anything was going on until I left my home because, you know, I use Starlink at all. In the midst of the currently blazing crypto market, Bitcoin continues its relentless climb smashing through another record high at over $72,700 on Monday, 11th of March. Initially ignited by the green light for spot Bitcoin ETFs, the rally now gains momentum with the looming prospect of a halving event expected to curtail new supply from Bitcoin miners. However, caution looms as the coin market crypto fear and greed index signals extreme greed suggesting a potential correction on the horizon. You see, we have all seen this movie before. I think it was around COVID period that Bitcoin was rising every week. I think that time it even hit like 60K. Then a reality correction came in and we saw it crash as low as 30K last year. It seems people just pour money in to prop up the value in order to attract greedy investors. Then later they crash out from all those naive investments. And once they cash out, the value drops massively again. Despite the cautionary signals, investors are still piling into Bitcoin with a whooping $2.6 billion pouring in this week and a staggering $9.9 .9 billion so far this year. However, the enthusiasm doesn't seem to be spreading to Ether, the second largest cryptocurrency, which is seeing fewer new investments amidst all the Bitcoin hype. With the halving event just around the corner in mid-April, experts warn that we could be in for more ups and downs, as past events have led to increased demand and price swings. 
You see, Bitcoin has the biggest PR of all crypto coins. And the fact that its recent surge is not affecting Ethereum, which is its closest rival, shows you that there might be some monkey business going on behind the scenes. But will that stop people from being careful? Nah. As Bitcoin's price skyrockets, eating levels we haven't seen before, many are holding their breath, wondering what's next for the cryptocurrency market. With the halving event looming and market sentiment at extreme levels, it's clear that the road ahead would be bumpy. Reminding everyone that investing in cryptocurrencies comes with its fair share of risks and rewards. A US-based startup, Cognition, has unveiled Devon, an artificial intelligence AI software designed to transform the landscape of coding. Devon marks a groundbreaking advancement, boasting the ability to convert simple commands into operational websites or software programs. This has been the biggest news in software tech this week. Developers have gotten so powerful that they are now automating themselves out of work. Come on, just when nerds are starting to take over the world. Yeah, that's a problem. Supported by the Founders Fund, Cognition asserts that Devin has not only aced multiple practical engineering interviews at prominent AI firms, but has also delivered tangible results on the freelancing platform Upwork. So as expected, I have a lot to say about this, but this is the news, so we don't have much time but in the next few days watch out for my full review on this trust me it's going to be sweet cognition touts devin as the pinnacle of innovation in the coding realm with the ai achieving top tier performance on the swe bench coding benchmark the company's announcement heralds devin as a game changer set to redefine the paradigms of coding debugging writing and deployment flutterwave has further decided to discontinue its virtual card service Bata. The move comes amid shifting customer demands and market trends. You know, I never really used Barter, but my brother did, and boy was he so disappointed when he heard this news. Apparently, it must have been a very, very useful feature. However, he did mention that the service hasn't been really available for a while now, especially since the old Naira dollar fiasco. Despite Barter's meager contribution of only 1% to Flutterwave's $2 billion transaction volume, the fintech company is redirecting its focus towards enterprise solutions and remittances, eyeing dominance in Africa's $54 billion remittance market through intensified efforts in these strategic sectors. Okay, uh, contributing 1% might be a good enough reason to ditch the feature, especially when the profits don't really justify the operating costs. This strategic pivot follows a year-long hiatus aimed at refining Flutterwave's offerings. Bata, once a popular platform facilitating international transactions for Nigerians since 2017, encountered setbacks, including a notable disappearance in 2022 following complications with its card partner Union 54, and missed a significant chargeback fraud attempt totaling $1.2 billion. Airbnb has made an announcement on Monday stating its decision to prohibit the use of indoor security cameras in all its listings. Previously. Hosts were allowed to have indoor security cameras in shared spaces, provided they disclosed them on the listing page and refrained from placing them in bathrooms or sleeping areas. However, in a recent blog post, Airbnb declared a blanket ban on indoor security cameras, irrespective of their placement or prior disclosure, citing numerous reports of guests discovering hidden cameras. The company assures that this update will only affect a small subset of listings but aims to address privacy concerns raised by its community. Having cameras in a house that you are renting out. <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong? While it can be argued that having these cameras can help with investigations when crime or damage happens, there is a larger probability of this being used or abused by the people renting out the apartments. Furthermore, Airbnb is implementing new regulations regarding outdoor security cameras and noise decibel monitors. Hosts are now mandated to disclose the presence and location of outdoor cameras before guests make bookings, prohibiting their use for monitoring indoor spaces or placement in private outdoor areas like enclosed showers or saunas. Additionally, hosts must disclose the use of noise decibel monitors in common areas to detect unauthorized parties, as Airbnb banned parties across all listings in 2020. Am I the only one that has never booked an airbnb before like um i've stayed in two of them two companies i've worked for in the past but the idea of renting someone's home hasn't always appealed to me uh i still prefer standard hotels even with all their issues juniper downs airbnb's head of community policy and partnerships emphasized the collaborative approach taken to formulate these changes incorporating feedback from guests 
hosts and privacy experts to ensure alignment with community's expectations. The new policy comes into effect on April 30, with Airbnb prepared to investigate and potentially remove listings or accounts found in violation of these rules based on guest reports. And it's time for speedrun. We have a lot today, so 3, 2, 1, let's go. Telcom Kenya loses 800,000 subscribers following a dispute with Tower Partner. Telcom, Kenya's third largest telecommunications provider, has experienced a significant decline, shedding approximately 800,000 subscribers over the past three months. This loss follows the American Towers Corporation shutting down its network towers. By December 2023, Telcom's mobile subscriber base had dwindled to 1.3 million, marking a notable decline attributed to the fallout with ATC. Uber denies breaching Lagos data sharing deal after government threatens sanctions. Uber has responded to allegations of non-compliance by entering a 2020 data sharing agreement with the Lagos state government, emphasizing its commitment to regulatory requirements in Nigeria and reiterating adherence to obligations including annual fees and data sharing. The agreement, aimed at real-time sharing trip data, has sparked discussions on the balance between privacy concerns and public safety. Fintech giant Interswitch eyes telecoms market with $1 million MVNO license. Interswitch, the Nigerian payments giant backed by Visa, has made a significant move into the telecommunications sector by securing a Tier 5 MVNO license from the Nigeria Telecommunications Commission for 500 million Naira, an equivalent of $1.08 million, in May 2023. This strategic maneuver allows Interswitch to explore new avenues offering integrated payment and telecom services to both businesses and consumers with plans to leverage its vast customer base and unique license to provide affordable connectivity solutions, particularly in underserved areas. Flutterwave's COO leaves fintech giant after several high-profile exits. Flutterwave's chief operating officer, Bode Abifari, has said farewell to the company after six years, joining a list of notable departures including former CFO O'Neill Bambani and VP Ted Oladili. Abifarin's exit coincides with Flutterwave's strategic shifts, including the closure of its barter service and a focus on international expansion efforts and product refinement. Crackdown on unlicensed companies cuts digital creditors in Kenya to 51. Kenya Central Bank has licensed 51 digital credit providers, imposing strict regulations to address concerns over high interest rates and unethical loan collection practices. The move comes after a crackdown on unlicensed operators, signaling a shift towards greater consumer protection in the digital lending industry. Four ex tax senior managers launched grocery delivery startup GoLemon. Four former senior managers from Paystack, including Yinka Adewui and Badebo Bade Oyelakin, have departed the company to establish GoLemon, a grocery and household items delivery startup, tapping into their extensive experience in the industry. Go Lemon enters the market, competing against established players like Glovo and Chowdeck, aiming to differentiate itself by managing its inventory directly sourced from farmers and FMCGs to optimize costs and cater to large orders. Stambik pauses fintech plans months after receiving approval in Kenya. Kenya Stambik Holdings has decided to halt its plans for launching a fintech subsidiary following approval from the Capital Markets Authority in late 2023. The company's CEO, Joshua Oegara, stated that the board has chosen to suspend the initiative temporarily without disclosing further details on its future direction. Despite prior considerations of partnerships or acquisitions in the fintech space disclosed in their fiscal report for 2022. And it's time for money talk. So much money came in this week that it would be a crime not to talk about it. South African car subscription service Planet 42 has secured $16 million in local funding from Standard Bank to pay off more expensive loans denominated in euros. Bimalab Africa has secured $600,000 to expand insurtech support in five new African countries, focusing on underserved communities and climate risks. Simera Sense, a South African small satellite camera company, has secured 13.5 million euros, an equivalent of $14.75 million, to expand production facilities in Europe and develop onboard data processing solutions. Egyptian ad tech platform, The Kilo, has secured $3.2 million to revolutionize out-of-home advertising with a new online platform for brands to connect with customers. Moroccan super app, Aura Technologies, has secured $1.5 million 
to launch a social fintech feature with a built-in digital wallet for instant money transfers. And finally, Egyptian health tech startup Tatimed has secured an undisclosed pre-seed funding from an anonymous angel investor. This funding boost will allow Tatimed to expand its platform for doctor education which utilizes interactive videos and conferences to deliver the latest medical advancements. And that's a wrap for today's tech news. Be sure to join us next week for more updates and remember to subscribe so that you don't miss a single one. I remain your bro in tech, FK. Bitcoin continues to... Wait, where does it Developers are got... Oh gosh. <coughs> the move comes amid shifting con... Customer and consumer. Consumer. <laughs> Only 11 people part away with the feature. Expected... Why do you talk normal? The one we want to talk to you.